You guessed it, more weathering. Hey everybody, it's Kenny Conklin from HobbyLinkInternational.com. Welcome to another YouTube video. Today, we're going to take a look at the second part of me weathering up the body of the car. So let's get right to the video. Today, we're going to start with the chassis. I'm starting to do some work back here, taking out these molded in lines. They're not correct or they don't look good. So we're going to take those out and redo them. I also put in a fuel line and I just went by how the kit had it. It goes into the frame. It's not supposed to do that. It should probably go all the way up the frame of the chassis, all the way to the engine. And then that would have looked better, but nobody's going to see the bottom. So I didn't do that. I started with sanding off that molded in detail, but but it was becoming tedious, so I found a better way to do that, and I'll show it to you now. I ended up moving over to my Dremel, and I used this bit. It's called an abrasive or diamond wheel point, and it works out really well. I put it on a low speed, and it took off the molded in detail really nicely and quickly. And also, there wasn't as many scratches as I was doing with the sandpaper. And here I'll do a little work with this bit, just to show you how it works. And that's it. Once I'm done with the bit, it just leaves a small line of scratches instead of a huge path of scratches like sandpaper does. And once I'm done, I just run a bead of Plastruck Bondine around just to take care of those rough edges. Back to working on the frame, we're going to take away that wire that's molded in up the side of the frame there. And then we're just going to make our own wire, bring it up. And I don't know if I'm going to let it hang or if I'm actually going to try to bring it into the engine. Again, we're gonna make two holes into the side of the frame, and this is how they had the wires run before. So we're just gonna use our little drill bit here, and we're gonna poke a hole at the side here. This way I can tuck the wire into the side, and we're gonna bring it across. And once we're done with that, we're gonna do the other side, poke a hole here, this way the bottom wire can go in too. Now we have both holes drilled as you can see on the side. I'm going to have to drill another hole through the top of the frame and then we'll bring the wires through there and make it look like it's going down the frame like it is here. To replicate the wire, I'm just going to use the thinnest magnet wire that I have. All I did was cut a length of the magnet wire and I twisted it together to make it look like the other wire and then we're going to place this on the bottom of the car. The next thing I did was tuck that wire through the hole and made sure I had enough length across and that I had a little tab on the back that wouldn't affect anything when I glued it down. I just put a little dab of CA and this way I can swing that little tab into the CA, push it down and then I can hit it with the Insta set, and we'll be good to go. Now that we have our wire done up, it's time to glue it to the chassis itself. We're going to use a toothpick to dab the CA across, and I'm just going to do little lines. This way I don't get glue all over the place, so I'll start here and start going across. This is kind of hard to do one-handed, so I use a little trick after I get the glue on. What I do is I take a Q-tip and I put the kicker right onto the wire, and once the kicker is on there nice and soaked on, I take the wire and I push it into the CA, and it usually doesn't glue my fingers to the part because the kicker's already drying the glue before it has a chance to stick to my fingers. And here's the first part of the chassis wiring done, the two lines, one going all the way across, one coming from the other side. These will never be seen, but it actually gives me a chance to practice scratch building and all practices, good practice. I removed that molded in wire up the side of the frame. We twisted up some more of our own wire and we brought it up here. We brought it all the way up to the engine. I'm gonna clip it off. I'm not sure if we're gonna bring it in or we're just gonna let it hang as a broken wire. It's just a little piece of added detail. Our wires are on, we're all set up to start spraying, and we're also primed up with Mr. Surfacer 1000. We're going to be using Scale 75 Flat Black for this part.
Our black base coat is on. Now I'm going to seal it with Mr. Super Clear Matte. This is for two reasons. One for weathering and two because for some reason with the Scale 75 flat black, it tends to chip a lot. It's the only color that I found that chips in that series. So we're going to seal it in now. Now that the frame is all sealed up, we're going to use the rust all system on the frame. I started to use it a little bit here. I've never done it on black before. So we're going to see how this works out and we're going to get into a little time lapse and show you how it works. Now this is the tedious process with rust all. Because it is real rust, you have to add layer upon layer. I used a blow dryer in between layers before and it really wasn't coming out that good. So I put a little bit of a thicker layer on here and I'm gonna let the alcohol evaporate on its own to see how it does. This is after numerous layers of rust all and it looks really, really good because it's actually real rust. So I can't complain about this system. We didn't do the back end yet because I still have to paint the gas tank and some of these features inside. And then we're gonna rust it up and hit the wheel wells and the rest of the chassis. The next step is I'm going to brush in the gas tank and I'm going to be using Ammo by MIGS flat aluminum. I'm not really going to go for a thick coat because we're really going to try to mess this thing up and make it look nice and dirty. There's just a few more details back by the wheel well. We're going to dry brush those the best we can, and if any mistakes, rust will cover it. Well, as you can see, I thought I took enough paint off of my brush to dry brush this, but I didn't. Mistakes will be made. It's no big deal. What we're going to do is we're going to go over that with rust, and it's going to hide all that silver anyhow. And it'll actually, if it does show through, it'll look like a little wear and tear underneath the rust. So I touched up those major mistakes. Everything is black again. I'm going to leave the silver on the bottom there, hoping it does show through for a little added extra detail. After I sprayed the rear end of the chassis with Mr. Super Clear, I noticed it turned our rust a darker shade. When I noticed that, I took out bottom number three which is the dead flat from rust all and I put it up top and it keeps the same shade so if you're looking to keep that same color I would go with the rust all number three bottle and you won't have to worry about that if you do want to darken up your stuff like this then you can use a different kind of flat and it should darken it up a bit and now it's back to working with the rust all system Now that's all dried up and that was two layers. This is what we get. The problem is with rust all, it is real rust and takes a long time to build things up. So you have the choice what you want to do, a lighter rust, a medium rust, a heavy rust. I'm going to go in a few more layers and get this guy a little bit more rusty and a little bit more dirty.
this is after the third layer of rust all i'm pretty satisfied with the gas tank i don't think i'm going to touch that anymore but the inner layer over here and the wheel wells i'm going to add more rust to it to get it really really dirty and remember to shake up your rust all once in a while because the pigments do actually or the real rust actually does settle pretty quickly so after about three or four layers we're up to a good portion i don't know if i'm going to hit it again i have to really look at it i may make it a little grimier but the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to hit it with the number three bottle of the dead flat seal all this in and move on to our next portion of the project and the last step in the rust all process is actually making it dirty they give you the bottle number four that has the clay in it i used the clay i just took a brush and we pretty much dry brushed it all over to give it that extra grimy look and now the chassis is pretty much completely done i don't know if i mentioned it in the last video or not but one thing i want to get across is don't be afraid to try things on your model kits i'm not saying ruin a really expensive model kit but see if you're into cars maybe try to find one that's pretty cheap so you can practice techniques and stuff on there or a tank whatever you're into some things sometimes look good when you first do it and then you want to change things up same thing with this car here after it sat for a couple days i really wasn't happy with some of the things that i did on the car in the first video so we changed them up i think i made the rust way too symmetrical so what we did here is i had rust here here and over here also so what i did was i taped off the door and i put it as primer as they were actually trying to fix up this car so we changed the door out and what i also did over here i lightly sprayed over the rust that we did over here making it look like either the rust is starting to break through or it's just really really dirty over here what i also did on the top is i lightly sprayed over this rust this way it definitely looks like it's coming through here we also had too much symmetrical rust here and here so as you can see on this side i colored it back in again rust is just starting to peek through and i really didn't like the three globs of rust that i did over here so again paint it over it very lightly and let the rust show through this way it looks like it's breaking through we hit it a little bit over here and a couple spots over here so now we got to do some more rusting on this i'm actually waiting for the green stuff world chrome to come in so we're going to be painting the chrome and we're going to try to make that look like rust is starting to break through on that too here's where we made our rust hole through here and we use the paint to make it look rusty but we're going to use the actual rust in that position and see how that turns out the main thing is to shake this stuff up really really well now you're just going to take a paintbrush and put the rust where you want it the first few layers come out very very lightly so the more color you want and the more variation you want the more layers you have to add so we just let that sit there and then i'm going to build it up and build it up and build it up and then we'll show you the results Here's the body damage we made, and then this is a few layers of rust all on top of it, as you can see, the difference with real rust and the paint right next to it. The next thing I'm gonna do is in bottle number four is the clay. I'm gonna add some of that clay on top of the rust, and what this does, it actually gives it like the appearance of the metal bubbling up, or getting flaky. And then once I'm done putting the dust on both sides, then I start again with another layer of the rust all and let that sink in. And then I may do the dust a few times just to get that really bumpy look. After a few more layers of the clay and adding more rust all, you can see it's getting a gritty texture to it and it's also getting a bit of color variation, which is nice. You're not just gonna have that deep red, you'll have a lighter red and sometimes you get some oranges in there. You can use this as much as you want or as little as you want, depending on how much rust you want to show through. Here, I'm just gonna do the same thing on the damaged areas we made before that were painted. We're gonna add some of that clay, we're gonna add some of the rust all and I'll just let you watch what we're doing.
the next thing I'm going to be doing is adding some dust around the bottom edges of the car and usually I don't buy pigments what I do is and it's a lot cheaper is I buy the soft pastels and I make my own pigments out of those you can buy pigments if you want but these are great they come in a variety of colors and you can also get them in the reds browns and oranges which would work great for rusting too putting up the rust dust and stuff like that so all you do is pick what color you want to dust up the bottom. I'm gonna go with a, a light gray. Just take your pastel stick, your X-Acto or whatever blade you use, and just scrape it. And that's it, and you get a nice fine powder out of it. And I'm barely scraping, and I have a huge amount already. And that'll probably cover up the whole car. Now how I put the pigments on is I just use 91% isopropyl alcohol. And wherever I'm gonna put the pigments, I just start making a random pattern as to where I want them and then I'll put my brush to the side and all I'll do is grab another brush dip it into the pigments grab some pigments on there and I'll just start tapping it onto the alcohol you may have to do this a few times and also when you clear coat it sometimes the clear coat takes away from the dust that you just put on here so you actually may have to add some more dust afterwards or build this up a little bit and try to do a test run The next piece I'm going to work on is the glass. I have to take this part of the fly window out because we took the door off, so I'm going to have to cut this out very carefully, get that off of there, and then I have to see what we're going to do. I think we're going to put in some sheet styrene over here to make the inside roof of the car, and we're going to use another technique on that also. So I'm just going to take my X-Acto knife and we're going to very, I already put this onto the car and made a line of where we have to take this off. You don't want to use nippers because this will just crack everything. So I'm going to use my X-Acto and I'm just going to cut slowly through it. And I messed up putting a scratch in the glass so I put the blue tape on just to try to keep a straight edge here. After a lot of, lot of scraping, I decided it's just gonna take too long. So I pulled out my Dremel rotary tool but this plastic is totally different than the styrene. It really wrapped around there. It was hard to get off. But what I did was on high speed, I started from the outside and slowly worked my way in till I got pretty close. And now I'm gonna take the rest down with sanding sticks and smooth that out. There we go, pretty good. We're just gonna test it on the car now to see if it fits properly. And there we go, the glass is fitting well. Fly window, windshield are all in there. 
the piece is missing so that looks really really good the we do have to trim a little bit there but these windows aren't going to stay crystal clear anyhow we're going to dirty them up because it's been sitting there we're not going to put future or anything like that on there Because the glass comes in one solid piece like this, I don't want those two lengths showing inside because we do have one door open. So I took measurements and it took me a few tries, at least two or three tries, to make a template. And the template doesn't fit perfectly, but that's kind of okay because we're going to be using the toilet paper method to make a headliner inside the car anyhow. I just wanted the middle covered up so it's kind of even when we're working on it. What we're going to do next is get these windows kind of dirty. I don't want them looking crystal clear. I want them dusty like the car's been sitting there. So we're going to use Vallejo Model Wash Desert Dust. And I'll give it that yellow look. Now this is a wash so I'm scared if I touch it later. I'm actually going to pull it off. And this is an experiment. I've never done it before. I got the wash in the pot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do really, really light layers and try to build that up. This way we get that nice dusty look and you can't see directly into the car. And then later on we'll do that second experiment and we're going to put a clear coat over it and hopefully that holds. And here we are, the windows are all dusted up, they're dry, it looks good, you can't totally see in, but you, it's not totally blocked either, so it's a good thing. And here's the real test of me touching the window. It didn't look like it came off on the front, we'll touch the back here a little bit and see if it pulls off. I know I'm not hitting it hard, but I don't plan on touching the windows that much anyhow. So it's looking pretty good. The next thing is I'll try a clear coat to seal these in. I always forget I have this handy dandy size of Vallejo matte varnish in the stash. It makes it easy just to pour some into my airbrush and hit something that I want to clear it with. And in this case, it's going to be the windshield that we're going to use this and try to seal in the wash with. And here's what the glass looks like after we fogged it up some. I'm trying to keep it in there, it's not glued in there yet. Like I said, I didn't want it totally blacked out. So you can actually see my fingers through there. So if you look in, it's going to be tough to see in. But I didn't want it perfectly clear either. I wanted it sitting there like it was just getting dusty outside. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to put our homemade headliner in here. I'm not too worried about it being perfect. We're going to use the toilet paper technique in here, so I'm going to super glue this in like this, and then we're going to use the, the toilet paper method, and I'm going to show you how to do that when we work on the interior in the next video. I'm not going to use the Insta set on this. I know for a fact it'll take the acrylic paint we just put on there or the acrylic wash and seal on there, it'll take it right off. So we don't want to use this. I'm going to have to let the glue set up on its own. We have our headliner in. I thought the windows look a little too even, so I'm going to try to use some water and just swirl it around and see if we could get chips and stuff like this little clear patch here, just to make it a little bit more authentic than what it is, just that straight dirtiness on the windshield. And we'll do this to all the windows and we'll see how it looks.
Okay, <clears throat> let's grab the car body, pop this in, and see what we like better. Okay, let's flip it over and see. Oh uh, yeah, that definitely looks better than it just being solid across. Much, much better. So I started the tedious task of painting the chrome in. I don't have chrome, so actually what I did was I used Ammo by MIG flat aluminum because it's not gonna be shiny anyhow. You can see here where I did it up over here, here, and here. I still gotta finish off all the chrome. That's hand painting. I wasn't gonna waste your time showing you that. But we, what we did to make it dull and look grimy is we used the enamel Starship wash over here and over here from Ammo by MIG. And we also put the rust all on here, and then I put the enamel over that. This way it looks even grungier. And as you can see, we got the windows all dirtied up. And what I also did was back here, there was a pretty significant gap. So I put the clay in from the rust all system, and I just dropped the sealer on there, the dull coat or the dead flat, and just added the dirt in there to hide that. And also at the bottom here, there was some gap issues over here so I did the same thing I just put the clay in and then I put the dead flat on there so I have to do all this once I do the chrome again then I'll show you the process that I used with the rust all and the wash okay all of the chrome is hand painted on and like I said before it's not actually chrome it's flat aluminum I don't want it that shiny anyhow so now to get this stuff dirtied up most of the chrome we're just gonna use Starship wash over it this one we're gonna put a little rust and we're gonna do rust on the bottom here and then we're gonna go over that with Starship wash also gonna be using the number one rust from rust all again Next up, we're going to use Starship Wash just to make it filthy. And with a clean brush, if you want, you can move it around a little bit to take off where you feel there might be a little bit too much dirt. And that's it. I'm gonna let it sit dry, and then I'm gonna move on to the other chrome parts. Well, the next step is to weather up all the rest of the chrome. Uh, by the windows is going to be a little difficult and hopefully I don't mess that up. I already started by doing this piece, just putting the wash over there and now we're just going to go around the rest of the car and complete that process. And that's pretty much it. It doesn't have to be completely dirty everywhere. Like you see me taking off some of the enamel wash and some places are a little brighter than others. And that's pretty much it on the weathering on the outside of the car. We're gonna let that dry and then we're gonna flat coat it to seal all that in. And the shell of the car is finally finished. We have all our rust effects on here. We went with our regular paints, our enamels, acrylics, uh, rust oil, everything. So it's looking nice and dirty, beat up. So we have the shell of the car done, 
Now we just have to work on the chassis and the interior, which will be coming up in the next video. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you like the car and we will see you in the next one. Thanks everybody for stopping by and checking out the video. If you enjoyed this video and enjoy the content that we're putting up, please hit that subscribe button and especially the like button because if you hit that thumbs up, it helps the YouTube algorithm know that you guys like this and it'll spread to more YouTube subscribers. And also, thank you very much for everybody that's been hitting that membership button. If you'd like to become a member of the HobbyLink International community, just go to our homepage here on YouTube, hit that join button and sign up. It helps us run all of our giveaways and sites and all that other good stuff that we do here at HobbyLink. Link International. So I hope you're all doing well out there. Make sure you're taking care of yourselves. Take care and bye-bye.